Katie, another thing I really loved about the book was having been a senior executive at Dell, your experience of going to Google and how it was eye-opening for you for a number of different ways. I was hoping you could tell the audience what that experience was like through the lens of the fresh start effect that you write about in the book. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one very fun experience I had as an assistant professor at the Warden School was getting invited out to Google's Mountain View headquarters to talk with some of their HR leaders about challenges the company was facing and to try to bring science to bear on those challenges. It was exciting because Google's a fast growing, neat company. And I was really interested in applying the insights I was generating in the ivory tower to real day-to-day -day problems. Um, I sort of couldn't believe, honestly, that I was going to have much to offer when I flew out and was wandering around this amazing corporate campus. But in the end, I was fascinated to learn that even this dream company, if you will, at the time it was 2012, roughly, and things couldn't have been going much better for Google. They were struggling with challenges related to human behavior, just like every other organization and just like every individual they were offering lots of training programs to their employees that were state-of-the-art so they could buff up on new skills and seeing that not everyone was taking advantage of them. They were offering all sorts of great wellness benefits, all sorts of financial benefits, retirement um, matching programs that were not being adopted by all of their employees. And they were wondering, how can we get more of our employees to take advantage of these fantastic benefits we're putting in front of them to be as good as they could be? And I thought, you know, it's so fascinating that Google is struggling with this. It was super interesting to have the conversations I did, but probably the most exciting moment in my visit came after I gave a presentation about some of the research I'd done that offered tools and tactics that actually could nudge people towards taking more advantage of these opportunities. And a senior leader asked a question that ended up pivoting the direction of my research for the next several years. And that question was, okay, Katie, we're completely convinced that there are lots of tools that you and your collaborators have developed that could help us nudge employees towards taking better advantage of our programming. But is there some ideal time when we could be offering these benefits and pushing out these nudges towards behavior change? And I just thought that was such a fantastic question because to my knowledge, there really hadn't been any attention paid to the fact that we know people's motivation to make a change to pursue a goal, observationally, it waxes and wanes over the course of our lifetime. And we didn't know much about whether there were systematic conditions that predict good timing for making those kinds of changes. So I took the question back to my research team and we put our heads together and started thinking, what do we know about this and what can we learn? And I worked with Heng Chen Dai, who's a professor now at UCLA's Anderson School and Jason Reese, who's a senior fellow at Wharton. And, and our first instinct was to think about New Year's resolutions and what that might teach us about timing and behavior change. Because we know that about 40% of Americans leap on this phenomenon, this pattern every year around New Year's, they say, here are the ways I wanna be better, gyms fill up, uh, et cetera. So what can we learn from that that's more generalizable? What we learned in digging into the literature on timing and the way people think about their lives is actually that we don't think about our lives linearly. We think about our lives like we are characters in a book and like there are chapters and, and those chapter breaks, New Year's being a big one, give us a sense, what we've discovered since, of a new beginning. Um, we have the sense that when we you know, move to a new community, take a new job, get a promotion, change our identity in some way, graduate from college, even on Mondays when we start a new weekly cycle, it feels like a miniature chapter break. All these moments, they sort of break up our mundane lives into these more concrete, smaller scale uh, opportunities. And we think at those chapter break moments, okay, this is a a moment that causes us to step back and think big picture about our lives and to give us a sense that we're new and fresh. And we can say on January 1, okay, last year I meant to quit smoking. Last year I meant to build up all of my productivity at work and I didn't get around to it, but that was the old me who failed. And this is the new me and the new me is gonna be different. So that ability to set past failures aside um, and that tendency to reflect at these moments, we've studied and it, sh it turns out that it creates big opportunities for change and people are more likely 
to set goals on popular goal setting websites, to show up at the gym, to search for the term diet on Google at moments that feel like fresh starts from the start of a new week or a new month to the start of a new year, of course, the celebration of holidays that we associate with fresh starts, um, birthdays, all of these moments, they're opportunities. And not only does it happen naturally when we just look at data on when people take action to make a change, but we can actually harness the power of those moments to nudge change. So we've shown in experiments that if you point out a date on the calendar to people that they associate with a fresh start, but might not already be thinking they could leap on like an upcoming birthday or the start of spring, those are moments that resonate as fresh starts. And we say, do you wanna start saving for retirement at, at that moment, for instance? That's much more attractive than just saying, do you wanna start saving next month? And we can increase retirement savings. We can increase the rate at which people raise their hand and say, yeah, I wanna start pursuing a new goal. I was so excited to have the chance to go visit Google. It was a really interesting opportunity, but also it propelled this research stream because hearing the question uh, about when, when can we time change helped me realize there was this huge opportunity and, and set of research that I could work on and I love that about interacting with people who are thinking in practice about how to create change. Often they have questions I haven't thought of as a scientist that are really important to understand and, and to make progress.